Welcome to the new lecture of the Real Analysis 1 course. Please check the description in this video to find the links to the previous video, the next video and the entire playlist of this course. We will now discuss about countable sets. So first we shall see the definition of a countable set. A set A is countable if n similar to A. n similar to A means there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between n and a. That means there exists a function f from n to a which is one-to-one -one and onto. Now an infinite set that is not countable is called an uncountable set. We have a theorem here. The first part of the theorem is the set q of rational numbers is countable and the set r of real numbers is uncountable. First we shall see the proof of the first part that the set Q is countable. For this we shall start by defining the sets A1 is equal to singleton set 0 and for each n greater than or equal to 2 we will define the set An as An is equal to set of all plus or minus p by q where p q element of n are in the lowest terms with p plus q equal to n. That means here p and q are natural numbers. They are in lowest terms. They are in lowest terms means there is no common factor between p and q other than 1 and also p plus q is equal to n. Now if we list down some of the initial sets of a n, we will get a1 as a singleton 0 as defined here. a2, a2 is set of all plus or minus p by q where p and q are natural numbers in the lowest terms with p plus q is equal to 2. So p plus q is equal to 2 means p and q can only be 1 because p and q are natural numbers. So we'll get a2 is equal to 1 by 1 and minus 1 by 1. Now to define a3, p plus q will be 3. So p plus q will be 3 means you will get 1 plus 2. That means 1 by 2 and minus 1 by 2. Then 2 plus 1. That means 2 by 1 and minus 2 by 1. These are the only elements in a3. Now when you go for a4, here p plus q should be 4. So p plus q should be 4 means you can start with 1, 3. So you'll get 1 by 3 and minus 1 by 3. 2, 2. 2, 2 will not be possible because 2 by 2, when you write 2 by 2, P and Q are not in the lowest terms because they have a common factor other than 1 which is 2. So 2 by 2 will not be included in A4. Then the other possibility is 3 plus 1 that means 3 by 1 and minus 3 by 1. So A4 contains 1 by 3 minus 1 by 3, 3 by 1 minus 3 by 1. A5, A5, so P plus Q should be 5 here. The natural numbers whose sum is 5 is 1 plus 4, so you'll get 1 by 4 and minus 1 by 4. Then you'll get 2 plus 3, so you'll get 2 by 3 and uh, minus 2 by 3. Then 3 plus 2, so you'll get 3 by 2 and minus 3 by 2. Then 4 plus 1, so you'll get 4 by 1 and minus 4 by 1. So these are the elements of A5. Now when you go for A6, you should get p plus q is equal to 6. So p plus q is equal to 6 means you will have 1 plus 5. So you will have 1 by 5 if you are writing a6. a6 will contain 1 by 5 and minus 1 by 5. I am not writing it. a6 will contain 1 by 5 and minus 1 by 5. Then 2 plus 4. You will get 2 by 4. 2 by 4 cannot be taken in a6 because 2 and 4 are not in the lowest terms. Similarly, 3 plus 3, 3 by 3, this is also not in the lowest form. So this also will not be included in A6. Then 4 by 2 will not be included in A6. Other only possibility is 5 by 1. So the numbers in A6 are 1 by 5 minus 1 by 5 and 5 by 1 minus 5 by 1. So this is how we define the sets A n. Now you can observe that each of the a n's here are finite and we can also observe that any rational number will appear in exactly one of the a n's. 
So if you look at 2 by 3, 2 by 3 will appear only in A5 because 2 plus 3 is 5 and 2 and 3 are in the lowest terms. So 2 by the rational number 2 by 3 will appear only in A5. So what we observe from these ANs is that each of these ANs will be finite and every rational number will appear exactly in one of the ANs. Now to show that Q is countable, we will show that there exists a one-to-one -one correspondence between the set N of natural numbers and the set Q. To establish that one-to-one -one correspondence, we will list out the elements of N and Q as follows. Elements of n are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, etc. They are listed here. Now we will list the elements of q down here. First we will write the element in a1 here. Then we will list out the elements in a2. Then we will list out the elements in a3. Then we will list out the elements in a4. Then we will list out the elements in a5 and so on. Now if you look at this list, you can see that each rational number appears in this list exactly once because each rational number belongs to exactly one of the ANs. So any rational number will appear only once in this listing. So we can say that every natural number here corresponds to exactly one rational number. That means an element of n corresponds to exactly one element of q. So we can say that the listing here is one to one. Now we will check whether this listing is on to. To check whether this listing is on to, we will take any rational number. Suppose we will take 22 by 7. We know that 22 and 7 do not have any numbers in common other than 1. So 22 by 7 is in the lowest terms and 22 plus 7 is 29. So 22 by 7 will belong to A29. Now we know that every AN is finite. So A1, A2, A3, etc. A28, just the sets before A29, all the sets before A29 are finite. We can say that this 22 by 7 will be somewhere in this listing. And there will be a natural number which will correspond to 22 by 7. Now 22 by 7 was any rational number arbitrarily taken. So if you take any rational number p by q, this p by q will eventually come in this list and there will be a natural number which will correspond to this p by q. So we can say that this listing or this correspondence is on to. So first we have shown that this correspondence is 1 1 and now we have shown that this correspondence is on to. So we can say that this correspondence between n and q is a 1 1 correspondence. So what we have shown is that there is a 1 1 correspondence between n and q. This means that q is countable. And this completes our proof that the set Q is countable. Now we will prove the second part of the theorem which says that the set R is uncountable. We prove this by the method of contradiction. That means we will assume that R is countable. Which means that there exists a 1 1 on 2 function f from n to R. Or in other words there exists a 1 to 1 correspondence between n and R. So this simply means that it is possible to enumerate the elements of R. So we will enumerate the elements of R as f of 1 we take it as x1, f of 2 we take it as x2 and so on. Now by our assumption f is 1 1 and on 2. Now since f is on 2 every element of R has a pre-image in n or every element of R can be written as f of n, where n is some element of the set of natural numbers. As fn is equal to xn, we can say that every element of R can be written as some xn. So we will write the set R as R is equal to set of all x1, x2, x3, etc. 
we shall claim that every real number appears somewhere in this list. Now let i1 be a closed interval that does not contain x1. This is the real number line from minus infinity to infinity and you have a point x1 here and i1 is a closed interval which does not contain x1. So this is i1. This interval is i1. Let i2 be a closed interval contained in i1 which does not contain x2. We know that there can be different disjoint closed intervals in i1. You can find at least two disjoint closed intervals in i1 and take one of these closed intervals as i2 and take a point in the other closed interval as x2. Now continue like this. In general, given an interval i n, construct i n plus 1 from it satisfying i n plus 1 is contained in i n and x n plus 1 is not an element of i n plus 1. So here you can see that i1 contains i2 which again contains i3 and so on. So you can see that this i n is a sequence of nested closed intervals. Now we shall consider the infinite intersection of these intervals. Intersection n is equal to 1 to infinity i n. Now let us take an element from the listing of R. Remember the listing of R is set of all x1, x2, etc. which contains all the real numbers. Now we take an element from R. We will take that element as x and not. And since x and not is not an element of i and not by the definition of i and not, it follows that x and not is not an element of this intersection, this infinite intersection. Now x and not was arbitrarily chosen from the set R. So we can say that none of the elements of R will belong to this infinite intersection. And this means that this infinite intersection will be empty. That is intersection n is equal to 1 to infinity i n equal to 5. Remember i n was a nested sequence of closed intervals. That means i1 contains i2, contains i3 and so on. Now by the nested interval property, this being the sequence of nested closed intervals, by the nested interval property, intersection n is equal to 1 to infinity i n is not equal to 5. This means that there exists at least one element x which is an element of this intersection. Intersection n is equal to 1 to infinity i n. And this x will not be an element of this collection R. Because we have already seen that none of the elements of this collection will be an element of this intersection. So here what we got that we got an x element of this infinite intersection which is not in this list. And this is a contradiction to the fact that R contains all the real numbers. This contradiction means that such an enumeration of R is not possible. That means it is not possible to enumerate R. That means there does not exist any one-to-one -one correspondence between N and R. That means the set of natural numbers and the set of real numbers, which in turn means that the set R is not countable, which means it is uncountable set. And this completes the proof of the theorem.